The time is finally here. Come on! Yo, what's up everyone? Trey Man 1 here. Welcome back to another Pokemon Journeys anime review. Guys, today we are talking about the episode that we all been waiting for. Episode 60, Farfetch versus Glade, Ash versus Rinto. And man, this is what I want from a Pokemon Journeys episode, man. They did everything so great. Oh, I have a lot to say. Let's go ahead and get right into it. For starters, the episode kicks off restating Ash's dream of wanting to take on the World Championship to reach Leon. And yes, guys, unfortunately, we do have another kind of jump from his rank, but it's not as bad. In the last one, you know, last time we saw he was like at a thousand something and then he was at 400. This one is only of 100 points. So I can actually let this slide. It's not that bad. They didn't skip so many battles, maybe about one or two, which that's totally fine. But we get to see Dracovich once again. And Ash is training. This episode begins with Ash and Go doing training with Farfetch and Scizor. Like, I just love everything about this episode. The beginning was perfect. And while old poor poor Dracovich hasn't appeared since he's been caught, good old Grookey actually does get some screen time and some focus. I really do love that they're focusing on Grookey, showing off his nature of how it beats his stick to revive plants and Pokemon. Like, that was a, a nice scene. And Go ends up catching a new Pokemon. Good thing is, though, this is the only real scene that Go gets development-wise, so he's left to the side so that Ash can finally get the screen time that he deserves. We then get the return of Rinto, who is actually in the Pokemon World Championships. It's revealed that the reason that him and Ash's first battle was in the World Championship battles because he had just entered and was in the normal class at the time. And I know a lot of people were mad at this, like, yo, Ash lost to a rookie? All right, hear me out, guys. Rinto isn't necessarily a rookie. Say, you know, Ash is in the super class where he's at right now and Cynthia just enters the world championship. Obviously, you know, if Cynthia and Ash have a battle right now, Cynthia will more than likely defeat Ash with that Garchomp. So looking at, at that, Rinto is probably a very powerful trainer who has a lot of experience. It's just he just entered the championship. And that's why, you know, he was so lower. He like he's a strong trainer. He just couldn't battle Ash on that same level because Ash has been doing this much longer. And this episode wastes no time getting to the battle. I gotta say, the animation was pretty nice throughout this whole battle as well. We get to see amazing moves from Ash and Rinto, where Ash, you know, he's like, oh yeah, we've been training with Wingstrom, we got all these new strategies, and he's trying to use them on Rinto, but Rinto is actually playing smart and is able to counter all of Ash's strategies. I really did like this. You know, yes, even though Ash has been doing all this training, Rinto has as well, showing that, you know, in this championship, you always gotta stay on your feet because you'll never know what the other person's doing. That's why I'm really interested for when Ash and Bia fight again. Yeah, Ash has Lucario and they're really strong, but Bia probably has a lot of tricks up her sleeve for Ash's Lucario. So that's gonna be a good rematch when that happens. And because of Ringtoast counters, he literally does the same thing that Farfetch did to that poor girder, breaking his weapon, the literally thing that he uses to use all of his attacks. And we literally get to see a whole different side of Farfetch. Farfetch is always the confident, stern stubborn pokemon but here once this leak breaks it's just sitting there like it doesn't know what to do thankfully though ash is able to encourage farfish to keep going and use a sword and shield just like Aegislash. slash like i love that reference it's like ash doesn't know what surfetch is but just for him using the leak as a sword and shield was a nice foreshadow to what was to come and as for fans that didn't know about surfetch i know that was a nice surprise for them to see and this episode really does go in hand with Ash and Farfetch's bond over the time where they couldn't fight together till here. They're in sync. I love seeing the moments where Farfetch is getting knocked down, but it kept getting back up because of Ash's encouragement. To the point that Ash says not once, but twice. <laughs> and fuses into the great Satoshi Kamaragi. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding, guys. But no, thankfully... Ash and Farfetch were able to keep going and fighting again. And I like how the journeys actually stuck to the game throughout. Instead of, you know, a bit of encouragement causing Farfetch to just go ahead and evolve, Farfetch actually keeps fighting and gets the three critical hits in before evolving. Journeys, you are a masterpiece in this episode. If every episode could be wrote, written like this episode, the series would be so great because not just this episode, but Farfetch's development overall. All of Farfetch's episodes, his capture episode, and the multiple focus episodes that it got, all were just perfect development for this Pokemon. Now, yes, it did take us forever to finally get this, but I'm so glad that 
they were able to tell a good story with Farfetch and build up its evolution to Surfish. I gotta say, this evolution was actually, in my opinion, better built up than Riolu and Tutukario. Yeah, Riolu did get a lot of experience and battle time, but just the story of Farfetch, man, it was so perfect. And honestly, I love how they didn't fully pull a black and white where, you know, black and white, anytime Ash's Pokemon evolved in the battle, he automatically won. It was like, ah, you know, it's getting boring and old. Where here, I thought that was going to be the case, but no, Rento is still fighting on. He has Galay use this ability where every time he gets hit by a dark type move, it gets stronger. And I'm just like, oh, snap, is Ash actually going to get through this? To be honest, I thought these two were going to tie. I actually would have been all right if they tied like i think if they tied that would have been perfect and for you know build up for another rematch but i'm totally fine with ash coming on top here showing just how powerful him and surfetch are and how far they've come that they're more in sync than ash and ringto together and i do believe that this is going to be development for a great rivalry i really do hope this is the end of ringto for a while yes unfortunately he's not in the opening and we haven't seen B a since episode 39 and you know we're 20 episodes later it's just like all right what's going on with bia so hopefully this isn't the end of ringto i want to see him more i want to see him come back with a mega galade if anything he trained at the castle with wingstrom so it's a possibility that he could go back to kalos and get a mega who knows and once ringto is finally defeated ash's rank goes up to 184 and i actually do believe that this is going to be the last super class fight that we're going to see where I don't think they're gonna jump him up off screen, but I think that the next fight we will see, well, technically that will be a super class fight too, but I think that'll be the one that brings Ash into the hyper class. It may be Iris, it may be Gary, you know, they are in the opening and he's so close to the hyper class now. Gary or Iris would be the perfect battle for him to get into the next class. Or who knows, maybe even a rematch with Karina. We'll just have to wait and see. Also, man, oh man, Surfish truly is an amazing Pokemon. I love the new personality that it has, you know. It becomes an actual knight. We get a moment where Ash almost gets hit by water and Surfish jumps in to protect his trainer. Like, Surfish didn't care anything about Ash previously. I remember those moments where Ash would try and be like, give him a hug and he just hold a stick, like, stay away from me. Because, you know, he was a warrior back then. He was a fighter. He was a lone warrior. He didn't care to be bothered by anyone else. But now he has became the knight that he's been meant to become. And I do love just overall surface i can't wait to see more of this thing unfortunately his story probably is over for now which is good because we will get to see draco fish and hopefully gengar and dragonite more soon but uh, ah man yeah, seeing how lucario has been shafted you know i'm gonna be sad to see that surfish get shafted like i, I want to see more surfish in the series but at the end of the day we, i know we will see it soon ash literally mentions you know leon is waiting for us so Honestly, Surfetch and Ash will have more development in the future. We're just going to wait and see. This episode definitely gets a 10 out of 10 rating from me. Ah, oh, man, Journeys, you did your thing with this episode. And just Farfetch's development overall. Like, man, I love this so much. The only thing I'm wishing is, you know, I hope that Rinto does come back and is actually stronger. Like, I hope this isn't the end of his character. And, you know, there's a few things here and there that they could have did better. But just overall, the story that they told, the arc that they held, for Journey Standards, this was fantastic. So I'm giving it a solid 10 out of 10. Great job to you, Journeys. In the comment section down below, let me know what y'all thought of today's episode. I'd love to hear our boy Kimon. And he kept the Kimon too, guys. Some people were saying it's like, yeah, man. So, you know, he, he might have a slight change, but I'm so glad that... We kind of get to still hear our good old come on. Like, let's go. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Trainman 1. Peace out. Kim.